Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Set Lusting Bruce. I've got a kind of couple things going on today. One, I have a discussion with my buddy UK Mark talking about tickets, what else? And we also, I've got a couple of voicemails from listeners who wanted to share their ticket story. So let's get started. Hi Jesse, it's Maria Morris calling you from the great city of Chicago. One city that is not on the first leg of the Bruce Tour next year, um, but hopefully the second time around. Um, I have a lot to say about the ticket situation. Uh, I think the first words that come to mind are horrified, betrayed, sad, disappointed, and disgusted. But my personal angle on this is that I had an illness earlier this year from February to April, where I was sleeping 10 to 14 hours a day. I had all this weird stuff going on, and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. And one of the doctors said to me, maybe you're depressed. I think you need to find your joy. What makes you joyful? And I said, well, the prescription is Bruce Springsteen is going on tour next year, and I'll probably get to see him a half a dozen times or more. And that is my main and most intense source of joy. So that's the context in which this disaster is happening. I don't know how many shows I can go to. I certainly can't afford most of it as I would have done it in the past. But I don't even know if I want to. We'll have to see. It's going to be a day of show decision. Take care, Jesse. Bye-bye. Hi, this is Justin Kinter from Deer Park, New York. Buying screen for buying tickets is actually really easy. I got them on at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time Friday. I was verified for Madison Square Garden April 1st, so I got on. So the queen moved fast, and by 10.11 a.m., it was my turn. I got tickets, $225.50 each, and then altogether five came out to $546.50. That's not terrible at all. That's about how much tip normally, about how much tickets meant, how much money my parents spent on Springsteen tickets. It was easy. 11 minutes, simple. All right, looking forward to the show. And at Madison Square Garden, you can't get anywhere better than seeing Bruce and the E3 fan in New York City in Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Set Lusting Bruce, your podcast all about Bruce Springsteen, his music, mostly his fans, and lately about tickets and concerts and live shows. Uh, for those of you who are joining, we just had a wonderful roundtable. We had about 20 people join us to share all their uh, thoughts, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And one of my favorite people, Mark Dempsey, had reached out to me before we had scheduled this and said, hey, let's let's do kind of a one-off. Let's just talk about tickets and everything going on. So UK Mark, one of my best friends, uh, the the co-host of one of the best Dallas Cowboy podcasts out there in the internet. Uh, Mark, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Jesse. It's great great to see you again. Uh, re- really, really good to see you again. And uh, it's it's a uh, it's normal that we talk about you know Bruce with real passion and real fun and real energy. It's uh, this is going to be my first time really ever being. A, a bit critical. It's been, it's been an interesting few weeks for me to be thinking about my stance on some things, my views on some things. But hey, it's always great to hear you and see you. And we've both had some pretty good luck with tickets in the last few yeah, months, had. right? So I guess let's we celebrate. have. Yes, and uh, as we're recording this, the Cowboys are in training camp, and so uh, hope springs eternal. Though I'm trying to, like Chris said, you know, my buddy, you know, my son Chris is like, yes. 
we're all like, okay, we don't care to the playoffs and what, but he said that first touchdown, you know, we're going to go crazy. I'm like, yep, that's Cowboys, exactly it. Cowboys are winning the Super Bowl. Simple Here as we that. go. All right. All right. Uh, so uh, let's, in case someone has never heard uh, an episode with you before, give us a little bit of background and then we'll start talking tickets. Okay. So re- real, real quick, uh, 48 years old, live in the UK. Bruce fan since I was 10 years old, uh, 1984, heard Dancing in the Dark and my whole life changed. You, you know, you know the drill. Um, seen Bruce 66 times, um, mostly with the E Street Band, quite a few solo shows, one of one Broadway show. Um, and just, I'll say it this way, on any given day, any given time, there is nowhere I would rather be than at a Bruce Springsteen concert. Yeah, my buddy Sam said this, and I stole it from him. He, We were talking, and he said, all apologies to Walt Disney saying the most magical place in the world is Disney World or Disneyland. He goes, a Bruce Springsteen concert is the most magical place in the world. Yeah, the, the lights go out, they walk on stage, and, you know, wh- whatever else you've got yeah. going on at that time, however happy, sad, frustrated, tough, yeah times are you are your family is the problems yeah. that you've got going on it just it just disappears jesse uh yeah and as you as you know um yeah. he, he he brings the most incredible sense of joy and spirit and i i love i love his concerts with yeah. all of my heart yeah um you know uh richard hunter who does a used to be in radio here in dallas and uh, does a pro wrestling podcast, talked about he's a pretty staunch atheist. And he said, the only church I attend is the Church of Springsteen. And the nice thing about it is the only tithing is every few years, he does a revival, you pay for a ticket, you celebrate in the Church of Springsteen, and then you move on. And uh, it really is um, something magical. but there is glueness in E Street world. There is a lot of unhappy people. There is a lot of people that are complaining. And I do think it is worth mentioning that we got some of this during Broadway. I, I remember all the people complaining about people going to Broadway more than once. And when I brought up, well, you try to get pit tickets more than once. Oh, that's totally different. Why? I mean, only so many people can get elbows on stage and you're trying to do it multiple times. Totally different, Jesse. Uh, Okay. Um, There are people that complained that he was doing river shows, uh, you know, during the river tour that I can't believe he's just doing, you know, doing the same set every day. This is all horrible. And then when he went to Europe, oh, I can't believe he's not doing the river in full. He's he's not doing the river. He he did it once and the European fans lost their minds, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think there is a certain, you have to take a grain of salt that the internet, it's easy for people to, it brings out the best then it brings out the worst in people so with that said you said you've been thinking a lot about this so i'd love to hear your thoughts and we'll kind of have a discussion so hey so jesse uh i'm gonna share my screen i know people listening can't necessarily see this but i thought it'd be interesting context to look at what's happening right now so we're recording this on august 1st yes tickets to the birmingham bruce springsteen and the e street band show Went on sale uh, 13 days ago, 14 days ago. Okay. And here's the position right now. You can still get pit tickets. Uh, That in itself, that in itself to me is the most incredible statement I've heard said about a Bruce Springsteen concert in 20 years. Okay. There's dedicated front of stage pit tickets available 13 days after these tickets went on sale. Okay. It it, It breaks my heart. Four hundred and fifty-seven pounds, which is roughly six hundred dollars. Add the taxes and fees and all the other things into that. Mm-hmm. You could you could come over to the UK right now. You could book that ticket. It would cost you more for the ticket than it would for you to jump on an American Airlines flight from from Dallas to come to London. Yeah, I I cannot understand how 
this has been allowed to get to this level where Bruce isn't even now selling out the pit section, which is which is where people have clamored to be for, for, for two decades, ever since the pit really started. This is where people have clamored to be, love to be, queue all day to get into, get to the front of the joy and the sense of camaraderie and spirit. And we're in a position now where tickets that originally went on sale for our 200 pounds uh-huh. are 457 pounds and then everything else that you have to pay. And it, it emphasizes to me the fact that as much as we all adore this man and his live show and being in the pit and getting down the front and seeing our friends, pit tickets are still available. People have literally said, I'm out. Now, and, and I, I was shocked. I, I looked at this a couple of days ago and I thought, wow, that's a story to share. They're still there available. Are no are those resale tickets or those actual nope. no, those are nope. actual tickets. Those those are the original platinum. original ticketmaster tickets. And is that with dynamic to pricing? That that is the impact of dynamic okay. pricing. Th- okay. Those tickets would have been let's let's call it two hundred pounds, then I four hundred and fifty seven yeah. pounds. Yeah. Uh, there, there appeared to be quite some number left. Um, you you can also choose if you wanted to to spend more money than that. Uh, here we go. I'll just if, if people are interested, you could choose to sit at the back of a section where you're not even guaranteed to see most of the stage. Yeah. You you sit in this section here. You're probably not even seeing Max. Oh, six hundred and ten pounds for a ticket yeah. that was probably a hundred and fifty, hundred and sixty, hundred and seventy. Yeah. So. People are actually choosing, and the pit is the bit I'm astonished by because of the clamor for pit tickets, the clamor to be down the front, the clamor to be part of that throng. Um, And it it was at that point when I thought to myself, people are choosing not to go and stand in the pit. Now I'm going to, I'm going to eight European shows, um, all all of which uh, by, by some, uh, you know, some wonder were not subject to dynamic pricing at the point when they went on okay. sale. Um, so almost every single one of the European shows I'm going to outside of the UK shows, I got front section standing at face value. And by face value, I mean uh, 200 bucks, no more. Did, they, did they go through Ticketmaster? Most of them went through Ticketmaster. Okay. And those, those early European shows were not dynamically priced. Seems to have been the UK ones and then the US ones that all went on sale around about the same time. Um, my 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 point is this: I'm yeah. going to that show. So that show that I've just put up on the screen, the Birmingham show for the UK, yeah. uh, I ended up having to make a choice to buy much much cheaper seats than to go and do one of the things I love the absolute most. So I've drawn a line, and yeah. my, my friends, family. They oh oh there's a line for you is there with Bruce they're actually quite impressed they're actually astonished oh we never thought there was a line with you for Bruce I've chosen all right seats yeah rather than pay three hundred pounds more for guaranteed down the front um it, it's a, it's astonishing to me I've gone through the whole kind of seven stages of grief thing yeah with it I, I'm trying to understand it um if it puts an end to scalping. Well, that would be wonderful, but it's not going to put an end to scalping. See, I I don't know if I don't know if you've gotten to hear and if and if uh, if you guys are listen to the group discussion that I had, uh, this is going to be a repeat. But I think one of the thing that frustrates me and other uh, fans is we hear all this. Well, we have to do this to stop scalping. We have to do this because it's not fair that, you know, and let's forget who gets what. Let's just say, you know, Bruce's team gets $500 and the scalper gets $3,000 because the ticket was sold for $3,500, right? That's just not fair. That's not right. So we have to do this to stop scalping. Yet, as one person said within hours of tickets going on sale there are hundreds of resale tickets out there now that either means that there is a bunch of people who 
and I hate the word verified fan. So yeah. what I'm going to say is um, that they were a verified individual, right? Like, like Ticketmaster did some kind of look that, okay, this we do not think is a ticket bot. We think this is an individual person wanting to buy tickets. Yeah. Um, and either all of them bought and then decided, oh, I'm going to flip them or something nefariously is going on. Yeah. So I, you know, it, there, I just had a guy, um, a <clears throat> U.S. senator, that um, they just recently, you know, the Senate voted to approve funding for veterans. Then uh, when it came back, a lot of Republican senators voted not to approve it. And yeah. the senator said, there's either two reasons. One, you guys decided that in this space that it was a bad idea to support veterans, or two, you got mad that other legislation passed, and now then you're trying to prove a point. So, and not to get political, but I'm like, either there's a whole bunch of people that are saying they want to buy individual tickets and then reselling them, or there is something broken in the system that tickets that should go to a fan end up going to a broker. Either to a broker or incredibly... If you look at the number of resale tickets that were back on the Ticketmaster websites, and this isn't yeah. th this isn't specific to one show, there yeah. were fans tracking this. Yeah. Within within a couple of minutes, yeah. Ticketmaster was advertising as part of the options that you could buy. Yeah. Verified resale tickets, but literally, Jesse, like for an entire row, twenty five straight seats. Yeah. So, okay, so everyone in that row put those seats back on sale. Yeah. You can't buy you can't buy 25 seats. You can buy four, maybe sometimes six. Yeah. So Ticketmaster, and I don't think I'm accusing them of anything here that, that isn't what they've done. Ticketmaster yeah. put put those back on sale themselves and called them resale tickets. Yeah. And uh, and I have said <clears throat> I don't think I think the only thing that will make everyone happy is that if everyone gets to go to the shows they want in the section they want paying the pace they the price they want to pay yeah. i think that's the only thing that will make everyone happy um but i do feel like there i got lucky or maybe i i don't know i in my mind i had i don't want to pay over 250 a ticket and yeah i, I you know because two of the shows, I knew I needed three tickets because Linda, Chris, and have, you know, since the tour, Chris has become a much bigger fan. Uh, Linda has always said, I like going to one or two shows, and I think it would be fun to go with Chris. So I knew that Dallas, which was his birthday, I needed three tickets, and Tulsa, because that's an easy drive. And when we went to Tulsa this past summer to see the uh, Bob Dylan Museum, we didn't get to go all the way through the Woody Guthrie Museum. We just ran out of time. So like, oh, this will be a nice little family vacation, right? So I knew I needed, you know, whatever I'm paying per ticket, it's got to be by three. And yeah. uh, so I was able to get three upper section for about 180. Now, Normally, I would have paid about 100, 125 for that bad of a ticket. Yeah. But I do agree with someone who says part of the dynamic pricing that's devious is you see other tickets going for 350, 400, and you go, oh, 180 all in? That's not too bad. <laughs> that's, that, that's one. So I've got two, two points Please, so I, yes. I wanted to say that is in a nutshell. One of the, I mean, it's funny, right? Bruce talks about everything on the board, boardwalk is tinged with fraud, yeah. Yeah. right? Ma magic tricks, all of yes. that. Well, yeah. Ticketmaster were listening uh, to Broadway yeah. because the big magic trick here is, oh, Jesus, I might have to pay $750. I feel really good about paying $275 for a seat in the 400s behind the stage. Yeah. So you walk away 
feeling like you've won. Okay, I'm in the building. That's great. Whereas yes. actually, if everyone, and this is the impossible thing to do. Yes. If everyone holds off and stops and waits, the new world order of ticket buying is going to be don't go and try and buy tickets on the first day they go on sale. Right. But that robs us, Jesse, of the thing that many of us love to do. It's one of the stories that comes out in your podcast time after time is, oh, hey, which five cities are we going to go to? Hey, yeah. where are we going to go that we haven't gone before? This is literally my my wife and I with a, and also with a couple of friends for the two months uh, you're kind of, of, of kind of planning of the European tour. Hey, tickets are coming. These shows are being rumored. Then suddenly they're released. Then more are announced. Uh, so my wife and I went through this process of, okay, we really want to go to a show early on on the tour. We've seen him in Dublin before. It's great. Let's try Dublin. Uh, want to go and see Italy. Don't want to go to Milan and Rome. We've been there a ton. Hey, he's playing near Bologna. Let's go there. Vienna is one of our favorite cities that we've ever been to. We've had a really great Bruce experience there in the past. Haven't been to Vienna for 13 years. Let's go back to Vienna. So we went through that process. It's fun. It's 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 engaging. You get to plan. You get to think about where you're going to go. We're going to end up being robbed of all of that fun because it's going to become, well, let's just see which tickets are around five weeks before the shows go on sale and, and pick the cities where there's a $200 ticket available. And the, the issue is if you're going to travel and I know everyone listening to this podcast gets that, but if for some reason you are a coworker of Mark's or you found us because of his cowboy podcast, you're going holy crap, what do you mean you travel to go? You know, that that is one of the things you do. Um, and so by not having that chance, um, because, yeah, I had the same thing. I said before tickets were announced, I said, I'm hoping that he either comes to Dallas, Austin, or Houston. And Oklahoma City. That's the ones he's closest he's been to lately. Yeah. And and my buddy Sam said, oh, he'll do all three. And I go, he never does all three. No. Never. He never does. And then, you know, he did. So I'm immediately like, oh, my goodness. Within a span of three weeks, I can see four shows and not necessarily have to pay for a hotel room. Now, we're going to end up doing some things and that, making a little trip out of it. So <clears throat> I am like everyone else. I am, you know, I have my ticket. I have a meeting outlook reminder. I have my phone, you know, that giving me a reminder at 10 minutes before it's on to go in there and get. Would it be smarter for me not to go? Yes, if everyone else does. But the problem is not everyone else is going to do that. And and then you're, I can deal with being online on the day the tickets go on sale. I've been doing it for however many years, as yeah. has anyone listening to this, right? I can deal with, oh, I missed. Sucks. I missed every now and again. I can deal with that. It's disappointing. I might not go to a city I wanted to go to. I might not get down the front in the pit. I might be somewhere else. I can deal with the disappointment of it when the system is entirely fair and you know, hey, I could pay 70 bucks. I could pay 130 bucks. I could pay 200 bucks. I'll deal with that. I can deal with the disappointment. Mm. I can't deal with a stacked deck that says not only are you not going to know the price that you might have to pay, but you actually may end up having to give up altogether and just wait months and then see. That, that, to me, ruins the essence of the whole um, philosophy of community and planning. And I intend to spend eight days with Bruce Springsteen in 2023. And here we are in the middle of 2022 getting stressed and worried about whether yeah. or not we're going to be able to do that. I, I would also say I feel, as, as bad as I feel for me that maybe... 
the, the time has come when you can't just pre-plan everything a year and ahead. Yeah. I feel worse for the fan that wants to go once to their hometown show and, and can't, or yeah. actually had the chance to get pit tickets and then they were taken away from them because the price got dynamically changed in front of them and they had to settle for a restricted view in the 400s behind the stage. I, or, or, at, or even worse, can't go, just full stop, can't go. I, as bad as I feel for me and, and the likes of us that, that, that travel and will find a way and will get to shows, I'm, I'm, I'm devastated reading these stories on Twitter about people going, okay, I guess I'm not going then. Yeah, I agree. One of the things that made me very sad is people telling me, well, just this is the first tour I won't go to. And, you know, this is just and I'm like, oh, that breaks my heart. Oh, it's awful. You know, well, just don't, you know, don't give up hope. Let's wait and see. You know, and the other thing is there is a lot of time left between now and when the tour is now you have to pay for airlines you have to get planned tries hotel tickets if you're going to see something out of town but if it's your home show you know i say have a little faith there might be magic in the night right like just yeah. let's keep hoping yeah but, but you've you've hit it's interesting you've hit the nail on the head there and something i hadn't really thought about well how much are these tickets actually going to drop so let's say Let's say someone in the US has always wanted to see Bruce in the UK or someone in Australia yeah. or so, and they're looking at the tickets that I just showed you. Yeah. Aston Villa, Aston Villa Football Club, next year, Birmingham. Oh, if that 450 drops to 350, then maybe I could go. But in the next six, seven, eight months, while that person has to wait for Bruce's ticket to drop by 150 pounds yeah. or 200 pounds. Every single airline ticket and every single hotel w within a hundred miles of the Birmingham stadium where yeah. Bruce is going to be playing is going to be going up. Yeah. So this whole thing of, well, prices might drop is just this false narrative of, well, yeah, but every single other element to do with planning your trip is going to get more expensive. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, I remember someone saying this a long time ago. Um, someone was going to go to their first comic book convention, and sure. the guy and the guy said, "Okay, figure out what you want to spend. Um, then do fifty percent on top of that, so you truly have a hard ceiling. Yeah, and then leave your credit cards at home, leave your checkbook at home. This is back when there were checks." because you will see things in the dealer room that you go, oh my God, I must have this, right? Yeah. So I, I almost want to say the same thing. Going into when tickets go on sale, in your mind, what is the most you will pay for what section? And then you have to live with it um, or you will get ticket remorse, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's true. And I'm this is the first um this is the first set of arena shows in the US yeah. that I I am not going to since two thousand and two. Now a, a lot of that time, you know, I lived in, in, in sure. Canada. Yeah. Um and, and went down to went down to quite a few of them. Um my wife and I luckily had made a decision because now we're back in the UK. Right. We haven't seen Bruce and the E Street Band in Europe since 2009. Okay. So we moved to we moved to Canada in 2011. So the whole E Street Band circus that ran from 2012 to the end of 2016. Okay. We saw all those shows in the US and Canada. So we made a decision. Hey, let's invest in seeing him in Europe. We haven't done that in what will be 13, 14 years. Yeah. And I I feel very lucky that we had made that decision as opposed to saying hey i'd love to be you know because every single part of you know 10 year old mark as we've referred to 10 year old mark yeah. before every single part of 10 year old mark wants to be in tampa on night one yeah right first e street band shows in what six and a half years yeah i'd love to be there well hey i still could be <laughs> there yeah. are tickets available yeah there, and here's my other point right it's night one 
of the Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band tour, and they haven't played in what will be six and a half years. Yeah. And there's tickets available. Now, every part of me wants to go, okay, there's tickets available. I, I, I can jump on a plane. I, I, can, I can buy a $450 ticket and sit at the back behind the stage. I, there's a part of me that thinks, do I want it that much that I'm going to sit there and go, I'm looking from behind a pillar and yeah. I'm looking at the, the back of Charlie's head. Yeah. Like I, it, it say, you say about ticket remorse for the first time in my life, I'm actually doing some kind of value equation mm -hmm. with Bruce. It, yeah. It's, it's baffling to me. So I didn't get into this with the other group, um, but you and I are friends. There's a safe space. A uh, couple people said for the first time they ever felt that Bruce was punching down, that he was beating up the little guy. So yeah. I, I, and, and I said this multiple times, you know, I said, I think you have to separate, first off, you have to separate the artist, you know, from the business part of the art. I also think that, when he talks about no one wins unless everyone wins, he's talking politically and socially, not entertainment wise. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on it because you had said for the first time you kind of had some mixed emotions. I, I've, um, Bruce hasn't done very much that I haven't liked, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, my, you know, my friends and family and a few people that will be listening to this will be like, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd listen to him if he was writing Christmas carols. You'd listen to me if I, you know, uh, probably I would. Yeah, I, I am not. I am not awfully critical of what he's done because actually I am a very large fan of almost everything he has done. Right. Value for money wise. I've never really regretted a single penny I've spent on the man. As critical as I get of him is yeah. kind of, you know, real man was not a very good song. I didn't particularly care for the arrangements on Western Stars. And I think there were maybe two shows that I ever went to of his that were fine, as opposed to being, yeah. you know, Grand yeah. Slam home runs, right? right? I find myself in the position for the first time ever of having to go through a process of, uh, was this him or was this Ticketmaster? Well, I think it was Ticketmaster. I think it was the algorithm. I think they all got surprised. I'm sure there's a I'm sure there's a statement coming out. Oh, there's no statement coming out. That's weird. Yeah. Um, maybe they'll it will all get addressed in the next round of tickets. Oh no, they still seem to be doing this. That's a bit strange. Landai then comes out with something that was so awful he should have not said anything. That was by far the consensus of everyone in Just the don't say table. anything. Yeah. Just don't say anything. Um and now I'm at the point of view of, well, the Stones have done it and McCartney has done it and some other people have done it. And it's been presented to him as, hey, there's a way to make considerably more money than the sum net total of the tickets that are on sale at yeah. a certain price, right? Because if we agree to this, everyone on the other end of this makes more money and they'll pay us more money. So and this, that means yeah. you can pay your crew more, you can pay your musicians more. Sure, you, I mean uh, every uh, all not rise, not, yeah. not that they negotiate with Bruce, by the way, which yes. we know from various right. documentations. Yes, absolutely, they, yes, they are negotiating with considerably harder negotiators than Bruce, and I doubt that Nils Lofgren is making considerably more money this tour than he did on the last one. Yeah, well, and but, remember, Bruce made that comment in his autobiography when someone said, I wanted to be paid more. And he said, you find a higher player person at your instrument and I will match it. But you won't because you're the highest paid person. You're on a pretty good deal. Yeah. So uh, they can't come out and say any of that. They right. can't come out and critique it. Um, I have a feeling that the final couple of sets of shows that went on sale the algorithm was softened a little bit. There seems think so, to be maybe? more people saying, hey, I got $200 tickets. I'm in. I got four tickets. It cost yeah. me $900. There seemed to be more of that. Yeah. Here's where I have landed with this. Okay. This idea that Bruce and Landau were told everyone else is doing it. It's becoming the industry norm. 
It will, to a degree, help you stop scalping. You may have to put up with the fact that your shows aren't going to sell out, technically sell out immediately, but don't worry, they probably will. They probably weren't ready for the backlash, the furore that they've had. That It does appear to have been considerably worse than any of the other bands. Yeah. I think they liked the idea of the industry is moving in this direction and everyone makes more money. The promoter will give you 30% more than whatever millions you were going to get from playing each of your shows. I have never begrudged Bruce a penny. Right. I've never worked out how much I've given him in album sales, T-shirt sales, concert sales. I've never worked out any of that because I don't care. Yeah. I am very concerned that someone within his organization and Bruce at the end of Broadway looked at the looked at the balance sheet and went, oh, Jesus, we need to be charging more money for our concert tickets. Yeah. And and that is a very, very sour taste to leave in my mouth because Broadway was all about, well, there are very specific rules with pricing tickets on Broadway, everyone. You know, the whole stuff that came out, we were all being taught to like children. We were all being told, you know, it's Broadway. It's Broadway yeah. pricing. You know, yeah. $900 is just what you pay. You want to go and see someone else on Broadway. It's $900 for the front seat. Yeah. Deal with it. Man up. Buy your tickets or don't buy your tickets. Yeah. Right. I have a sneaky feeling that two things happened. They looked at the per per capita seat price that was going at Broadway. And then they looked at what people were spending on StubHub 10x. Yeah. Right. I, I put my hands up. I took a long time to decide I actually wanted to go and see Broadway. It surprised a lot of people that I took so long to decide I wanted to go and see Broadway. And in the end, I said, if we're going to do this, we do it right. We go on my 45th birthday and we'll 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 set a maximum we'll pay. Yeah. I, I, I bought $75 tickets in the top back row and paid 10x for me and my wife. We went on my birthday. I was completely at peace with it. Okay. I have a sim I have a simple theory now that they looked at the prices that were being paid on StubHub and said, we'll have that. Thank you very much. And I think Bro I think Broadway, I don't want to damage. It was one of the great nights of my life. Jesse, we've yeah. talked about this. One of the great nights of my life. I don't resent a penny of what I paid. I would probably have paid double. But it leaves a very sour taste in the mouth if they got to the end of that Broadway run and went, oh, these idiots spend money like nobody's business. Just charge them more. Just charge them more and we'll 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 make more. I think I think what you said there is really well son well said, Mark, is that I I don't want and this sounds so egotistical, I don't want Bruce to take my fandom for granted. Yeah. Right. And I and I you know, I haven't had anyone else talk about that. And I think that's a if we sum it up, maybe that's it. You know, you just just because you can charge that much doesn't mean you should, right? Don't you know? Now I am totally I I, I want to I want to politely laugh at people that say, hey, with five hundred million dollars coming from Sonny, he should do a free show. No. Okay. I don't I don't see anybody else working. If you got a big bonus, you didn't say, okay, hey, thanks for that bonus. I'll work free for the next couple of months. I mean, at your job, no. Uh, you know, it's two different buckets. Um and I I don't know. I mean, I think there's some practical things we could do. One, I do think you should it should be able to say here is the base price and here is the like Uber pricing, surge pricing. Sure. It's yeah. Uber says this is now five times the rate. And you go, yes, I want that or no, I don't. Yeah, I'll I, go, I'll go and wait in a coffee shop for 45 yeah. minutes, or yeah. I or I'll get in my Uber in two minutes' time. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. I you know, but Ticketmaster doesn't do that. It just says. It's four thousand dollars now. That's the price, not and, and, ten times X. Yeah, and and kicking people out on a very significant basis. People losing the tickets that they thought they they had. Yeah, I I am 
I, I'm completely with you. Yeah. Uh, back to the point of, I don't begrudge him the chance to make more money. Yeah. I don't. I would suggest big arena, 20,000 people, 25,000 people. Do the Broadway thing. Put the top tier on at $40, $45, $50. The people that just, you know, want to be in the building and want to see Bruce because they've seen yeah. him on every tour since 74 or yeah. because they've never seen him right. and they really think this is their chance to go and see him. But times are tough, right? Which Bruce sings about all the time. Yeah, Times are tough. Stuff's happening. The economy is tanking yeah. in many, many countries. I, yes, I can justify 75 bucks to go and see Springsteen. I'm going to be in the 400s. I'm going to go and have some beers and party with some friends and dance all night. Wonderful. That is the essence of, of people being in a Bruce Springsteen concert, right? Yeah. First time I've seen him in a very long time, I want him to play Dancing in the Dark and I want him to play Hungry Heart and I want to have a beer and a burger and I just want to dance. Yeah. Wonderful. That person is being killed on this tour. Yeah. That person are. probably isn't going. I would. I would rather the pit and the seats, you know, the premium seats around the banking of the stage and the pit. Fine. Put a 25% premium on those. Yeah. I'll pay sometimes and I won't pay other times. Make more money from me at the shows where I'm really going to pay to be in yeah. the pit. Don't make it from the guy that is not going to be in the venue because the seat half a mile away from the stage is $400. And the issue is we don't know how to do that. We don't know because if you put those tickets as 50 bucks, some corporation will buy them and sell them for 200. It's just that's the reality, you know. And I heard people say, you know what, Jesse, we should go back to you should sleep camp overnight. You should have to stand in line. I'm like, OK. And if you don't live in Jersey, do you want to walk in? Do you want to wait for the gas station attendant to come in and fill your tank? Do you want to now have to get in your car and drive to the office because we no longer can telecommute? You know, uh, let's 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 not go back to those days. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, whatever we do. Yeah. Whatever we do. The reality is that just doesn't make I mean, you can't. You can't unadvance technology and and, no. you know, um. I have said this before and I will repeat it. I I have spent five seconds with the man in Austin. You know, he, you know, that's yeah. it. I got my seven five seconds. I got my two pictures with him. I got my signed book. And so um I have been doing over 850 episodes of this podcast. September will be my seven year anniversary. And he doesn't know me from Adam. Um, I doubt if his crew, his team even knows there is a Set Less Degrees podcast. But, you know, he has been my companion for this part of the ride, to quote him. Correct. And so uh, if there is, I am that guy that your friends are saying, there is not much. I do not know what he can do to make me turn on him. And I am a little surprised that the anger of people out there in the fandom because of the circumstances i've i've been i've been very very surprised i mean the the big one is, is chris phillips at backstreets yeah oh yeah and and i've read everything that that backstreets have put out in a very very long time i used to get their magazines yeah um i've got the big couple of books that they've done um and i avidly avidly rely upon their website for you know for fan based content but yeah. you know pretty pretty clear pretty unbiased pretty good reporting yeah just i i rely upon them the the visceral tone that came out of their emails and the interview that he did uh, and and the the content that they put out that that was what really surprised me um and and kudos to them good for them for putting something out so scathing so scathing and rightly um i i was i was most impressed and surprised by that um so the, i don't agree with that anger 
I just, I just don't. I can't. I, I and and I'm not saying they don't have the right for that opinion. I just can't. I can't understand that anger mm. and that blind, um, the feeling that Bruce has betrayed the fandom. I just, I, I can't understand that feeling. Do you know? I okay. That's a very interesting point. I um. Let me let me get this right in my head. What I'm trying to say here, I I think it comes back to what I said earlier. Yeah. I'm almost more I, I, angry. Is a really interesting word, isn't it? I'm almost more angry about the the one guy or girl that that can't go to a show now than I am about how I feel about the prices that I might have to pay in the future. Yeah, that that's what. That's what I feel. I, 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 am I angry about? Well, clearly now I'm not going to be going to the U.S. leg of the tour. No, I've I've been to lots in the past. I'll probably go to some in the future. I might go to a U.S. stadium show or two in in August September 2023. Well, if you when, can time it up with a cowboy game, ideally, right, uh, right, ideally, like, yeah, 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 ideally a cowboy game. That's good. I feel frustrated i feel let down that they just followed the path that others have taken right i i feel a bit disillusioned that they didn't come out and say because i i do genuinely think i still think this i think they were surprised at how nonsense those prices were on those first couple of on sales yeah they have to four or five thousand dollars for some tickets yeah they, they have to have been surprised by that yeah. So come out and say that. This was very surprising. <laughs> yeah. I come out and say that. I mean, if Landau or someone had come out and said, um, this was very surprising. I don't think we're going to do anything about it. Uh, but this was very surprising. Yeah. Right. I would probably have had an awful lot more respect for them. Right. Yeah. I would. I would have had more respect. I would have had more respect for, we agreed to this. Jesus, we got caught out. Yeah. We're not changing the rules. We're not changing this. We've agreed to it. It's the yeah. way the industry is going. Everyone's going to have to deal with this. I'd have so much more respect for them. But I think that's kind of what he said. He said, hey, this is about what this is what every our peers are doing. And we think for the value, you know, the other thing I, I find I'm a little is the anger mark at when they when Ticketmaster puts out these tickets and the thoughts of the percentages, you know, the this is almost as if the nothing they say they're going to believe. If you were a politician on the right, there's nothing the left is going to believe you saying. If you are a politician on the left, there's nothing that someone on the right is going to believe. And they, they, I, they could have, they could have opened the books, and people would have said, "No, Ticketmaster, you're lying. These did not go at face value." Yeah, the, the problem with that is, the Ticketmaster may end up being the boy that cried wolf. Yeah, right. Ticketmaster have screwed fans for years. No one's sure. really ever believed that the verified fan system works well. No one's ever really believed that they put all the tickets on sale that they're meant to put on sale at one time. No one's ever really believed that waiting rooms work right. They, they Ticketmaster are the boy that cried wolf. Yeah, They may have done this perfectly and no one, including me, is going to believe them. Oh, yeah, but I agree. My, my gripe here yeah. to some degree is not really with Ticketmaster. At the point where John Landai Management and Bruce agree a fee with the producer, uh, the, the promoter, I should say, and at the point when they then price the tickets and tell Ticketmaster, hey, here's the core price of the tickets, that none of that is to do with Ticketmaster, none of it. Yeah. Now, have they gone over and above that and 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 significantly screwed fans and caused us a caused an awful lot of hardship? Yes, they have. Yeah. They really have. My my gripe here isn't really even with Ticketmaster. The moment you build in an algorithm saying, Hey, if there's a hundred thousand fans for twenty thousand tickets, mm -hmm. make the tickets more expensive. That's so it it comes back in your mind. This is a tick is a Springsteen management issue. Yeah, that that's yes. 
and, and I'm still, you, you asked me this a few minutes ago, I'm still trying to convince myself to say I'm angry with Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still, I'm yeah. still actually trying to make myself say the words. I, I, I don't know. I don't actually, do you know what? I've kind of moved on to the apathy stage. Yeah. Um, I'm very, very sad. Um, it, 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 it ruins part of the experience. I hate for the person that can't go, like I've said a few times, that's what I am most, most, most cross about. But, but Hey, can I, can I finish this off with a mess with a positive message? Before you do that, I wanted to sure. tell you, um, I was so depressed of hearing all the anger and all the visceral tweeting and posting. Yeah. And a couple people actually emailed me directly, DM me directly and says, I can't believe you're defending Bruce, Jesse. Like you, you seem to have no empathy for us and attacked me. I honestly gave a oh, thought geez. about, do I just quit doing this podcast? No, no, don't. Do that. No, no. I'm just, I'm just telling you yeah. that was my feelings. I, like, is I this know. just though, you know, and the, and, and my issue is I have no problem with someone being mad at Bruce or his management. I'm just saying, I don't understand that. I just can't equate a business transaction with the joy that this man's music has given me. I just, I'm able to separate them. I'm not saying anyone else has to. Um, and yeah, that's well, that's, that's well, that's well said. And, yeah. and your, your, your Jess editorial yeah. on was, was excellent and very well positioned. And, and it, it reminded me at, yeah. at an important moment, right? Uh, I had, I had, Bruce's music played at my mother's funeral. Uh, I had Bruce's music read out at my wedding. Mm -hmm. The number of Christmas cards I received from people, birthday cards I received from people that say that have that. Oh, I heard Bruce on the radio that they had thought of you from halfway around the world, or they quote some line, or you know, in Christmas cards, I get people all the time from around the world. Santa Claus is coming to town, musical notes, yeah. right? Because they think they think of me and they think of Bruce or they think yeah. of Bruce and they think of me. It's incredible. It's incredible. And the connection that we have to this man is, is, is fantastic. I wouldn't change a second of it a, across the, what, 38 years that he's been inspiring me and bringing me joy. I wouldn't. I really wouldn't. Yeah. And but but we actually we we are allowed to be we're allowed to be angry we're allowed to be cross we're allowed to be confused yeah because what's happened in the last two months is very confusing so it's very confusing so I just thought of this someone said this a while back and I think this is how I would put it I'm not saying I want a divorce from Bruce but <laughs> that sob is sleeping on the couch for a couple of days. <laughs> Right. He is, he, you know, he is going to sleep on the couch for a couple of days because I'm not happy with him right now. So, so, so look, ju jump forward nine months, the band walk out on stage, they start, and, and I, I tell you, it's going to be burning train. They start, the organ starts, Max starts, Neil yeah. starts, Bruce, it's all forgotten, right? No, yeah. it's all forgotten. Everyone's just going to be singing. Yes, I do think I always thought it was Burning Train too. I think Ghost is on another one that could certainly uh, be a thought. But when I heard Burning Train, I pictured that just them coming on stage and going with it. So that that's how that it's how they're going to walk on stage. I'll take it every single night as the yeah. opener. Yeah, I, I said to you on a previous podcast that 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 song blew me away. It still blows yeah. me away. I I I, I have it on very 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 regular repeat yeah so could could i please please try and balance, finish balance this, this up out? yes okay here is the thing i am most happy about on this tour i've i've never really done it before i have i'm i'm not a selfish person at heart when it comes to bruce i'm very selfish i get myself a ticket i sometimes get my wife a ticket and then good luck to anyone else I really, really, really wanted this tour to be about helping some other people reconnect with some people, see some friends, get some people in a stadium. Um, I cannot tell you how excited I am. We managed to get one of my very, very best friends 
uh, from Toronto, from our time living in Toronto. I was in his band uh, playing Springsteen covers. I've told you about this before. Tickets to both nights in Dublin that were in Dublin. He's coming over from Toronto. He had a nightmare. He was online at 3 a.m. Toronto time. Couldn't get his credit card to get accepted. Call, he called me up. I was like, leave it with me. I'll get I'll get back in. I'll find a way. I'll get you tickets. Got, got the guy tickets. Um, we were then able to get another set of very, very dear friends from Toronto, husband and wife uh, tickets. They were coming over for six or seven shows in a row, kind of all across Scandinavia. But they realized the way that tickets were going on sale, they were just never going to have a chance yeah. with yeah. the second night in Oslo. Just They were just never going to have a chance because they were buying tickets to other things. So I was like, screw it. I took two hours off work because, uh, right, sat at my computer where I am right now at my kitchen table. And by just God's mercy, as, as Bruce might put it, I'm literally one of the first people in. I hadn't even planned to go to Oslo. I was so excited I was going to get them tickets. I got four tickets, not two. And then had to surprise my wife who got home from work that afternoon with the news that we're going to Oslo next year, as well as all of the other things. That's awesome. I was, I was so happy. Um, then for Copenhagen, um, my sister had said she really wanted to take her young boys. My, I've taken my sister to one show in the past years ago on the reunion tour. And she dropped me a note just before the European tickets were going on sale saying, Oh, I'd love to take my boys. She's got two, like an eight-year-old and a six-year-old. Uh, I'd love to find a way to take them. My wife and I got into the Copenhagen. You know, we were sitting here with two laptops, two pads, two phones, six things going, right? Yeah. We were so determined we were going to get tickets to both nights in Copenhagen because Catherine, my my wife, is is half Danish. So we have a ton of family over there. We, again... It's it's incredible when it happens. We got in um, on a couple of devices at the same time to the All point right. where my wife could get tickets to Copenhagen and then I could get tickets to to Copenhagen night one for my sister and her kids and her partner. Aww. So I look back on this tour, which hasn't even happened yet. I look back on this tour. That's the wrong phrase. Yeah. Right? I, I look on this tour as being, wow, I'm, I've, I'm able to help friends, family reconnect see bruce i'm really super proud of the fact we were able to do that but that ties back to imagine i've been trying to promise that in the u.s yeah and you suddenly get told that that ticket is now 800 dollars. yeah and i, I think the other thing this took away from us is and this was also broadway is there were a percentage of people I think the majority of Bruce fans are like you. You you said, Jesse, my heart was filled with joy when I saw that you got tickets. And yeah. I think most of us do feel that way. When we see someone got tickets, we are thrilled for them. But there is a percentage of people because of the circumstances that are angry and resentful that someone got tickets that's sad that is a sad situation because that's not what bruce that's not no. what we east readers do no 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 that that that's not that's not how that's not how we do this yeah exactly if you if you want to be in a show i'm glad you got tickets absolutely yeah mark this was great thank you for staying up a little bit late i know you got to get back to work you this was your this was your dinner hour uh yeah hour, your tea hour i guess uh <laughs> if someone wants to reach you how can they okay uh, on on bruce springsteen or dallas cowboys related topics uh on twitter at mkd1973 uh and i i hope to see as many people as possible in various pits and fields and parks and stadiums uh, around the world next year as possible. I, I hope, Jesse, I hope to meet lots of people that love talking to you as much as I love talking to you. Yeah, I am really hoping um, we're, I know a lot of people want to get in the pit, but for those of people who aren't in the pit, I'm trying to figure out 
like in Tulsa, can we set up a happy hour like around <laughs> four? And for those people who don't have to get in line for pit, let's do kind of a happy hour and visit with people. I will be having my recorder and I will be walking around, you know, asking people to give comments and we'll nice. do episodes of that. So nice. as always, Mark, I appreciate you. Thank you. You were very kind. I overslept on Sunday when we were supposed to record. <laughs> and so I'm glad we could do this. Uh, listeners, it's okay. It's okay you've got Bruce on the couch. I understand you're mad at him right now. But remember, you know, overall, he's a pretty good companion. So, you know, after a while, you know, forgive him. And let's all see each other on tour. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, listeners. We'll talk to you soon. Goodbye. Set Lustig Bruce would not be possible without the wonderful support of my patrons. Brandy Brown, Rob Barnett, Ted Canova, Crystal Carroll, Bella Pori, John Munson, Andrew Goddard, Betsy Hodges, Levi Petrie, Stephen Malio, Steve Rogers, Dale Hosick, Terry Smith, Anna Lynn, Chris Bloom, and Mary Thomas. You are my blood brothers, sisters, and siblings. Thank you. I want and need your feedback. You can reach me multiple ways that tell me what you like or don't like about the show. You can reach out to give me guest suggestions or maybe to join me on the podcast yourself. We're on Twitter at SetLustingBruce or at Jesse Jackson DFW. I have an Instagram, SetLustingBruce or Jesse Jackson DFW. Our Facebook page, facebook.com slash setlustingbruce. Go to patreon.com slash setlustingbruce to find out how you can support the show. And we have several tiers of support. Please go to your favorite podcast player and hit subscribe. And tell a friend about the podcast because that is the way we're going to grow. If you're not tired of hearing me speak, you can hear me on Next Stop Everywhere, the Doctor Who podcast, where Charles Skaggs and I talk all things Doctor Who, the How Many podcast, where me and my friends Gary, Scott, Bob, and Jr. talk pop culture, and finally, my newest podcast, The Last Best Hope for Conversation, a Babylon 5 podcast, where Karen, Lou, and I are going through the TV show Babylon 5 one episode at a time. I am always looking for guests, so please reach out to me, setlustingbruce at gmail.com. You just heard the fun talking, hard rocking, music loving, album ranking, fan thinking, joy spreading, lyric reading, story sharing podcast that is the one, the only. Set listening, Bruce. The theme for Set Lessing Bruce was written by David Rosen, used by permission.